The rational zero theorem, or also known as the rational roots theorem, tells us that if I have f of x, and f of x is a polynomial with integer coefficients. So we want to make sure that every coefficient is an integer. Remember those are positive or negative whole numbers, or zero. Then any rational zero of f must be of the form p over q, where p is the factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Now this is easier to see with an example, so let's work through the given example on your screen. In this example, we're given f of x equals 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. For the polynomial, we want to list all the possible rational zeros, then identify the actual zeros, then fully factor the polynomial. Let's take this step by step. First, we want to make sure that all of our coefficients are integers. We have 2, 5, negative 4, negative 3, all of which are integers, so we're good to go. We can use the rational roots theorem. We then want to pull out the constant term and the leading coefficient. Our constant term is negative 3. Our leading coefficient is 2. Okay. The factors of our constant term, the negative 3, are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3 because we could multiply positive 1 by 3 to get negative 3, or I'm sorry, positive 1 by negative 3 to get negative 3, or negative 1 times positive 3 to get 3. These values are our values for p. Now let's look at the leading coefficient, 2. The possible factors of 2 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2 because we could do positive 1 times positive 2 to get 2, or negative 1 times negative 2 to get 2. Essentially, whatever factors you come up with, you can have plus or minus. Those are the values for q. We then are going to make a list of the possible rational roots. So that doesn't mean that all of these roots will be actual roots, but they're the numbers that could be the rational roots. And we do that by combining our factors for p with our factors for q with p divided by q. So let's start with p equals 1. We get 1 over 1, which is just 1. And then 1 over 2. If p is 3, we get 3 over 1, which is 3, or 3 over 2. So our possible rational roots are the set 1, 1 half, 3, and 3 halves, where all of these could be plus or minus. So that's our final answer. Now, to check to see if these are actual roots, what we want to do is we want to plug them into our function. So we're going to plug in 1, negative 1, 1 half, negative one-half, three, negative three, three-halves, and negative three-halves. We do some calculator magic. Plugging in these values, we find that f of one is zero, f of negative one is four, f of one-half is negative 3.5, f of negative one-half is zero, f of three is 84, f of negative 3 is 0, f of 3 halves is 9, and f of negative 3 halves is 7.5. Our zeros, we have three of them, occur when x is positive 1, negative 1 half, and negative 3. So our actual rational roots are x equals 1, negative 1 half, and negative 3.